everyone welcome back to my channel and another tutorial today we are going to be making the Esperanza bag by Aura Rosa designs um, I've been wanting to make this one for quite some time and I finally got around to it so this is this is uh, what she looks like she is a very large handbag um, in this tutorial I did do things a little bit differently um, as I wanted the handles to drop down. That's just my preference. The other way is perfect as well. Um, yeah, this is the Esperanza. I think uh, you'll really enjoy how this one goes together. I was actually expecting it to be a lot like the Erica Bowler bag and uh, the Magdalena bag, uh, but this is a birthing uh, finish. It's not a binding finish like those ones are, even though it kind of has a similar design. Let me show you a few things about this bag. So it's a handbag, a crossbody bag or a shoulder bag. It has two pockets here. Uh, it has this flap that kind of closes off this pocket. Uh, there's two versions that you could do this. You could do like I did with a swivel clasp or there is instructions for a tie. I do not show those in this tutorial. Here's another pocket here. It has a recessed zipper. And then a zipper pocket and a slip pocket on the inside. Now my zipper pocket and my slip pocket, I've done different than what's in the pattern. This is how I do all my, my pockets. Um, so I don't have a tutorial on how I do the slip pocket. So just follow her tutorial or her instructions on how to do it. And for my zipper pocket, I do have a class on that, which I will remember to put down in the description if you want to do it the way I like to do it. Um, again, this is a very, very large handbag. She is awesome. Um, fabric, again, I don't know. I always forget to keep the salvages, but I did get uh, this fabric from Fabricland. Uh, this uh, metallic is Rex Faux Leather in the Metallics collection, and then my black faux leather is the Dakota uh, Marine Vinyl from Fabricland as well. All of my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. Um, interfacing I used in this, um, I chose to use the foam option. You can use either Decavo Light or foam. My preference is actually foam. I like foam. I like a loftier bag. Uh, so uh, all my exterior pieces are um, interfaced with uh, Pelon Flex foam. The bottom, I put some Decavo Heavy uh, in between the vinyl and the foam to give it a little bit more stability. And in my front pockets here, I did both pockets. The main panels of the pockets are backed with, of course, SF101, my medium woven interface, and it's all on um, all of my uh, cotton pieces. And then I put a, a level, a layer of Decaval light on there using her pattern pieces to uh, keep it out of the seam allowances. Um, besides that, that's really all the materials I needed to do this one. So yeah, without further ado, I actually first want to thank Alexis for letting me do a uh, tutorials on her patterns. Um, I am addicted to Aura Rosa patterns. They are one of my top three pattern designers. I just, I just love her and she's a good friend. So yeah, so without further ado, let's start making this bag. Okay, so what we are going to need for this bag, you are going to need some zipper by the yard, number five zipper by the yard, your nameplate, If you're doing this my way with the handles, four rectangular rings, two D rings for the crossbody strap, two swivel clasps, a slider, two number five zipper pulls. a zipper end, four strap ends if you're doing the handles my way, a half inch swivel clasp, a D-ring for the, the front flap, 
optional purse feet. Okay, you're going to need to cut two lining fabrics. Uh, if you're using cotton, make sure you're backing them with a woven interfacing. I'm using black SF-101. Two exterior pockets. Again, I'm using cotton and I'm using the same print for my lining of those. Also, all four pieces back, backed with SF-101. A piece for your slip pocket and a piece for your zipper pocket for inside the bag. I am modifying to make fold down handles. Here's what I cut for these pieces rather than the handle pieces in the pattern. For two handles, four inches by 20 inches. Four handle connectors, four inches by eight and a half inches. You will also need four one inch rectangular rings, four one inch strap ends. I will construct the handles as I do in my handles class. I will leave a link in the description below. If you would like to do this the Aura Rose away, please refer to my Magdalena or Erica Bowler bag tutorials, also links below. So here's my two handle pieces. Again, this part is modified as we are doing the fold down handles. A crossbody piece, a exterior bottom, a piece of decoville heavy for in the bottom, and your lining piece. Again, all of my cotton pieces are backed with a medium woven interfacing. You are going to need two uh, lining side panels and two exterior side panels. You will need a flap clasp connector, a piece of deck of a light to stabilize the flap, and of course your uh, lining and your exterior flap pieces. So you'll need your piece for your side connectors, your four pieces for the handle connectors if you are doing these with the fold down handles, which is my way. And here's your connector pieces here. Two of the top lining panel pieces. two exterior and two lining zipper panel pieces. Uh, two pieces of deck of a light for, for your exterior pocket stabilizer. The pattern only calls for one, but I am actually going to stabilize both pockets. two exterior main panels. So all of our exterior pieces will be backed with flex foam by Pellon. You can also use Decaville Light if you choose. That's uh, my strip that I'm going to use for my slip pocket and then my zipper overlay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to prepare my straps and my crossbody strap. I will leave a link to my class below on how to do both of those. Okay, now let's start constructing our flap. So on the exterior piece, I have centered my piece of deck of a light. And we are going to make our flap clasp connector. Make sure you draw a line down the middle. And then take a little piece of double-sided tape And we are going to uh, fold the long ends into that center line. Okay. 
and this is making our one inch piece into a half inch piece. Just like so. And we are going to top stitch along those folded edges with a 1 8th of an inch seam allowance, which I have done here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a small piece of double sided tape again and I'm going to take my swivel clasp and I'm going to fold the, the wrong sides together of that piece to enclose our swivel clasp. And I'm going to mark in about a half inch line as a guiding mark to where we are going to place that on our flap. So find the centers of your exterior flap please. I just do mine with little snips. You can just use a mark if you prefer. Okay, and again, I, I do love my double sided tape. I am just going to put a small piece on the right side within the seam allowance of our exterior flap piece to hold the flap or the uh, connector in place. I'm going to line up the edge and center it with the center mark there and it will be facing up towards the right side. I am then going to take my flap liner, put it right sides together with the main flap and clip it all the way around. Making sure our center marks are, mat are matching. We're going to sew around this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Do not sew the long straight edge. So this is what we have. So now what we're going to do is we are just going to take pinking shears or you can do notches and not where our connector is but all around it we are going to cut not notches to make our curve nice when we turn it through. Trimming it down to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, do not cut the end of that connector. And then you can turn it right side out through the open side. And then poke out all your seams nice and flat. You can use a chopstick to do this if you wanted or a turning tool or whatever. I'm just going to use my finger. Make sure that that looks nice and centered. And then we are going to top stitch that with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. So here we have it. Now I'm just going to put a rivet right about here just to give a little more stability to that swivel clasp connector. So we are riveting through that uncut end of the connector which is inside the flap. And then I'll set that with my rivet press. Okay, so let's prep our connectors. So we're going to do our hidden connectors and our front connector and then the handle connectors option that I am doing. Again, this the handle that I'm doing are not in the pattern. This is just a way that I am doing them. Um, 
as my own preference. So again, I'm taking double-sided tape. I'm going to put some tape along the long edges of the connector. And if you don't want to use double-sided tape, you could just use clips to hold this in place. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to, just like we did with that swivel clasp connector for the flap, we are going to fold the long edges into that center line that we marked. I always uh, put my center lines on my vinyl as I'm cutting it out. It just saves a little bit of time later on and it's something that's already done. That is done and it should measure one inch. You're going to do the exact same thing with the hitting connectors. Now my hidden connectors, I'm not doing as she does in the pattern. I am doing it uh, the way that I like to do them. So uh, you'll be able to find a tutorial to that class down in the description on how do I do my hidden connectors. Or if you would like to do them the Aura Rosa way when it comes time to doing them, you can check out my Les Marina tutorial and that has full instruction how to do it the Aura Rosa way. Both ways are equally good. My way you can only do it if you are using a non-fraying fabric. If you're using cotton definitely follow the instructions in the pattern to do the hidden connectors when we get to that. Okay, now to prepare the handle connectors, again, this is not in the pattern necessarily. If you would like to see a tutorial how uh, the connectors are done usually, you can definitely check out the my uh, tutorials on the Magdalena bag and the Erica Bowler bag, and they show them the Aura Rosa way. So again, you're going to fold these long edges into that center line that we made. And normally we would fold this in upon it and stitch it, but we are not going to stitch them right away. So I'm going to use another piece of double-sided tape to bring the folded edges together and hold them in place for when we're ready to sew them to the bag. So do that with all four handles. Now you're going to take the two connectors and the front connector and we are going to go and top stitch these with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So that's done. Excuse the shininess. I have a freshly oiled machine. And I've just put a couple clips on the handles just to hold them together. So I've also completed my handles, put on my strap ends and completed my crossbody strap. Again, the instructions for those are down in the description. Okay, so for the handle pieces here, just on the bottom parts, we're just going to cut a little bit of an angle. This doesn't have to be exact on the just one end of our connectors here. And what this is going to do is just uh, relieve some of the bulk because these will kind of be free underneath the uh, front and back pocket. So just so we don't get a solid line there where they're standing out, this just reduces a little bit of bulk. 
Okay, so now I'm going to take my exterior main pieces. My bottom piece here, I am going to fuse the Decavo Heavy within the seam allowances and install my purse feet and attach it to foam. Um, if you need to know how to put the purse feet in, I have a class down in the description there. Again, foam on the back of the main panels. And foam, I'm going to baste on to the back of the exterior side panel. So all the exterior pieces will have been basted to foam. Okay, so there we have it. Um, if you're worried about this being too bulky, you can always use a zigzag stitch to compress the foam. And I've also put in my purse feet. Again, decaval heavy can or decaval light can be used instead of foam for this too. Okay, so now we're going to take our four handle connectors. And we want the where we cut the angles, that's going to be facing down. So I am going to measure up, make sure that they're all the same length. Again, this is my way of doing the handles. This is not in the pattern. So I'm going to measure up from that bottom seven inches. And take my chaco and just make a mark. Do that on all four pieces. Make sure they're fairly even. Okay, and we, this is where we're going to need our four rectangular rings. So on the wrong side, you want to put about a six inch or so strip of double sided tape on all of the connector pieces. So I want to make sure that that tape is at least an inch below that chalk line that we made on the back or on the front side of the connector pieces. Okay, then what we're going to do is take one of the rectangular rings and we are going to put it and line it up with that seven inch line that we drew. And on the back, just peel back some of the paper from the tape and stick that down in place. Try to keep the sides as even as you can. And I'm just going to put a clip on just to make sure it doesn't come apart. And I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other three. Make sure they're somewhat the same length. This way we know we will have nice and even strapping.
just like so. Okay, now we're going to take one of our exterior main panels. We are going to want to find the centers of the top and bottom. So to do this, you just fold it in half and I just put little snips in. You can just mark it with a pen as well. If you're doing the snips, make sure you're keeping them within the seam allowance. Mine are usually about a quarter of an inch as we're doing a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so from that center mark, we are going to measure in two and a half inches and up two inches. I originally was going to mark this, but then figured it would be a lot easier just to use a larger ruler so we can use the ruler's edge as a guide to our placement here. So two and a half inches in from that center mark. And we are going to take our connector take off the tape and two inches up, stick it down to the main panel, just like so, using the edge of the ruler as a guide to have a nice straightly placed strap. So again, two and a half inches from the center, and two inches up. And I'm just measuring on the outside to make sure that I am even, and I am. If you don't have completely centered straps or where they're supposed to be, they'll be all oblongs. So you do want to make sure that they are uh, placed properly. And I always double and triple, triple check, second guess myself. And if they aren't quite centered, just do adjustments as needed. They should be approximately five inches from each other in the center there. Do the exact same thing with the other main panel and the other two strap connectors. Okay, so now we're gonna take this to the machine. I have put on my uh, zipper foot here because I want to be able to stitch as close as I possibly can to the hardware. So I've put on my left, I always call it the left-handed foot, but it's just the left side zipper foot. And we are going to attach this to the bag with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So get as close as you possibly can, needle down to the hardware, spin it around, and I have my zipper foot lined right up against my rectangular ring here, and I'm going to use my rectangular ring as a guide, so we're nice and close. Now I'm just going to use, this is actually just my... Uh, tension checking piece of scrap vinyl, but I'm just going to put it under the foot to protect my hardware um, from my walking foot so it doesn't get all scraped up and work my way down the other side. Just like so. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and do it with the other side. Okay. 
needle down to turn really close to the hardware. And again, if you're using a walking foot, make sure you are protecting your hardware at the back of the walking foot so it doesn't get all eaten up by the walking foot. Okay, and go ahead and do that with the other main panel. Okay, so I already went and marked where I am going to put my rivets. I have some scrap pieces of Decaville Heavy here just to have a little more extra stability behind my rivets. Because the last thing we want is the rivets to pull through the material. I always have a little container of Decaville Heavy scraps already all caught up or cut up so they're easy access for when I need to do my rivets. So you're going to put your post through. And on the back side, put on a piece of Decaville Heavy or Peltec scrap and your cap. And then I'm going to set that, set that with my rivet press. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that with the other three. Okay, so now what we're going to do is pull out our four pieces of our back and front pocket. Now the main front pieces I have already fused on my Decaval light. Again, the pattern only calls for it to be on the front one, but I like my pockets to be a little extra stiffer, so I have done it on both of the exterior panels. So we want to find the center of our main front exterior pocket, and we are going to attach the front connector for our flap. So again, I'm just doing little snips where the center is. Again, I'm just double checking my center. We are good. Okay, and then we're going to take our connector and our D-ring. And on the wrong side of the connector, we are going to put some double-sided tape just on the bottom part. Just like we did with the connectors for the handles. And on the right side, we're going to take our Chaco and mark in an inch and a half. And this is going to be our guide for the placement of our D-ring. Now, I had top stitched this. I shouldn't have done that. It should be like how our handles were and we would top stitch them to the bag. So I'm just going to end up going back over top of that same stitching and hoping I can match it up. Okay, so fold this down about where that line is to the back and then center the strap onto the front of the exterior pocket. You want this to be nice and centered. So I'm using my, my cutting board uh, to help center that on there and to make sure this stays nice and straight, again using my cutting mat, I am also going to take my ruler and put it at that half inch mark from that center and use the edge of my ruler to guide it nice and straight onto my panel here. just like so. And then from the folded edge of the D-ring, again, I am going to have to go on to be very careful and try to go right on top of my stitching here. From the folded edge of the D-ring, I'm going to measure down one inch and that is going to give me the line where I am going to cross my fabric to go down the other side. 
So I'm going to go up the stitching across and back down again. Okay, so I have done that. Again, ignore the oily mess. That'll disappear eventually. And I'm going to put a rivet right here, right above that stitching, about a half inch up from the stitching line there. So just as we did with the handles, I have my piece of deck of all heavy here to back my rivet post just to give a little extra stability to my rivets. And then we'll set that with my riv the rivet press. Just like so. Okay, so now we are going to want to take our lining piece. Again, I'm using the same fabric, but these pieces are the ones that do not have the deck of a light on them. And we are going to match up the top raw edges. So these are placed right sides together right now. If you think my woven interfacing looks odd, it's only because I am using the black SF101 woven interfacing rather than the white. Okay, and then we're going to sew down here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And do the exact same thing with the other pocket. Okay, so that's done. So now we're just going to take our pinking shears and just where the curves are, we are going to trim it down to about an eighth of an inch so we get a nice crisp curve there. Be very careful not to cut your stitching. Again, if you don't have pinking shears, you can put little notches here instead. And then you are going to fold these two pieces wrong sides together and roll that seam in between your fingers to get a nice crisp seam. Uh, if you're like me and you are using quilting cotton here, you can take this to your iron and press that seam out as well, which is what I'm going to do. And then what I'm going to do once I've pressed it is I'm going to go along here and top stitch it with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance on both panels. So that's done. Top stitching is done for both panels. I also went ahead and put on my nameplate and make sure if you're doing that you're only putting it through the exterior of the pocket not through both layers. Now we have little wings here. They can fly. <laughs> you can cut those even with the sides now. Okay, so now we're going to take our exterior main panel and place our pocket on top and we are going to make sure it's nice and straight and centered and we are going to base these together. Of 
for both panels. So we can see the bag starting to happen. Now you're going to see there's a little bit of a billow here. That is okay. We want that to happen. Then we have a usable uh, pocket. Okay, now we need to attach our flap to the exterior pieces. So along that straight edge, find your center. And on the back piece, we want to center the flap right sides together with the back main panel. Clip it in place. And then baste that with the 1 8th of an inch seam allowance along there to hold it in place. And there we go. So that's our back panel and our flap, which will flop over. And our front panel, we can set those aside for now. Okay, so now we're going to take we're going to form our gusset. So we're going to take our our two side pieces. Find our centers on the top, which is the shorter sides. And we are going to do our hidden connectors. So again, I'm not doing the hidden connectors like she does them in, in her pattern. I am using my way of doing them. Again, I have a class uh, down in the description if you need to learn how to do them my way. And if you want to do it the Aura Rosa way, make sure you check out my Les Marina tutorial and it shows how to do that. So I'm just measuring down centered one and a half inches and placing my one inch mark as my guide where I will be placing my hidden connectors. So I'm not going to show this in this tutorial. Again, you can check out my class down in the description or go on over to my Les Marina tutorial to see how to do it the Aura Rosa way. Okay, so my hidden connectors are done. And I've put two rivets back with Decaville Heavy just to keep them nice and stable. Okay, now we are going to form our gusset pieces. So you're going to take your exterior bottom and your two sides. So we're working with the longer edges of the sides. And we are going to line up these edges, clip them together. and stitch this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Flip it over when that's done. Make sure our seam is going towards the bottom and top stitch that seam in place with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And you're going to also do that with the other side. So just like that, making sure that the seam is facing down towards the bottom. And we've marked our centers along the bottom pieces and we are going to attach them with our main panels. So we're going to ma match up the center of the bottom piece and the center of our main panel. Clip all the way across. Or a couple clips in anyways and then we are going to take our side and match it up to this top side of the bag. Put in a couple clips. And do the same on the other side. And then continue clipping all the way around, evenly distributing that fabric around the curve.
I did not have to do any snips to get this around the curb with this bag. Now what we want to make sure is because we have a straight bottom, so the corner of the bottom there, we want to line up with the seam of where our bottom and our side piece connected. And this is so we get a nice sharp corner for the bottom of the bag. So this is where you'll want to put needle down. You don't want this part to be curved when you're sewing it together. You want to try to make a nice crisp corner. And do the same on the other side, match up that corner with that seam. and evenly distribute that fabric around the curve. So this bag, uh, the pattern is written so well, the, uh, the pieces just fit together perfectly. You see here, no clips are needed to make it go around that curve. It just fits perfect. Okay, and then we're going to take this to the machine and stitch all the way around with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now remember when you get to that bottom part where that seam met to put your needle down and to make a sharp corner, don't make it curved, make it nice and sharp so you have a nice square point corner there. And again at this other side, needle down at that seam and turn. like that and then you're going to take your scissors and trim that seam up to approximately an eighth of an inch seam allowance. just like so. You're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other panel on the other side. So here it is. So here you can see how we have those nice sharp corners at the bottom. That's where we put the needle down and it looks like our flap is nice and centered and it clasps on well. So that's the exterior of the bag complete. You can set that aside. Okay, next we are going to prep our zipper to make our zipper panel. So what we want to do is we want to take the ends of our zipper and we want to turn it to a 90 degree angle. This is how I do it. I just kind of do it by hand like so, folding it upon itself and use a clip to keep it in place. And then the other side, you want it to match as close as you possibly can to that curve. You want it to be nice and even. So this sometimes takes a little bit of finesse and a little bit of uh, trial and error as you will see here. It takes me a couple times before I get it right. And 
And then we're going to take this to the machine and we are going to tack that on there on each side as well as do a couple stop stitches at the bottom. So this is what we have. So I'm just going to trim up the little wings here to make it nice and flush with the zipper tape. Like so. Okay, so now for your four zipper panel pieces. From each short end of all four pieces, you want to draw a line one inch in. And this is going to give us a guideline for a perfectly matched fold because um, we need to fold in all these inches by or all these ends by half an inch. So if we mark one inch on each end and then we fold in those short edges to that line, we should have exactly half inch folds. So for my zipper panel, I'm using vinyl for my top pieces and then my lining fabric for the bottom sides of them. And then I'm going to take some double sided tape. If you're using cotton, you can definitely press these. Or you can use clips as well. And then you're going to fold each of those short line or short edges into that line we just drew to make a half inch fold. Just like that. And then you're going to go and do that with the other three pieces. Okay, so they are all done here. So I'm just making sure that they are all the same length. It's very important that they are the same length. Okay, then what I'm going to do is from just one side of one of the lining pieces, I'm going to just put a mark at a quarter of an inch in, and this is where I am going to be placing my zipper to start. So again, I'm using more double-sided tape. I do love my double-sided tape. Putting it along from that quarter inch mark on the right side of that lining zipper panel. Again, you can use clips to hold this in place. I just like my tape. So I'm going to right where that quarter inch mark is, put my 90 degree angle right even with that, and then stick it down. So my zipper tape is right side up, as is my lining piece right side up. I find the tape helps save a step rather than basting and then uh, coming back and doing the top piece. But we're going to do it all in one step here. So at this point, it's easiest to undo your zipper, take some more double-sided tape or clips, whichever you prefer, put it along that top side. Okay, and then we're going to take our exterior zip panel and put it right sides together with the lining panel. So now it's right sides together with that tape, as, or the zipper tape as well. And uh, we are sandwiching the zipper in between our lining and our exterior panel. You want to make sure that our folded edges line up. If they don't, you can adjust the fold in or out to make it. I'm pretty good though. You want them to be even. And then I'm going to put my zipper foot on my machine again, and we are going to go across here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's done. So this corner where our zipper, the 90 degree part of our zipper is, I like to just put a little bit of a clip here. It just helps reduce a little bit of the bulk there. 
Okay, and then we want to fold that panel away from the zipper. Again, just on the vinyl side, I am using some double-sided tape to help fold, hold that there because I can't press it. And then fold it away from the zipper tape or zipper teeth as taut as you possibly can. And then the other side, do the same with the lining. And I'm just going to pull the edges down to match the edges of the exterior piece and hold it together with clips. You want the fabric to be away from the zipper teeth. You don't want it to be catching, the pull to be catching on the fabric when the zipper is being used. Okay, make sure that's nice and even and flush with each other. And then what we're going to do is we are going to top stitch up here, across, down the side, and then baste those raw edges together. And then you're going to do the exact same thing with the other two pieces. So this is our zipper panel complete. We're nice and even and flush. Our zipper, where it starts and begins, is nice and even. So now we want to, for future reference, find the center of our zipper panel. Try to say that 10 times fast. So just match up the ends of the panels and clip your centers. Okay, so I went ahead and did my slip pocket because I do it different than the pattern. Um, and marked my centers and I also did my uh, zipper pocket overlay for easy turning. The instructions for how I do that are down in the description below. So you're going to need the panels. You are going to need to your zipper panel. I know that I like mine to open from left to right. and I like my zipper pocket at the back. So I am going to be putting it with my zipper pull to the left. So we want both our panel, our zipper panel and our lining panel to be right sides up and centered and clip them together. And then we're going to take our lining top panel and we are going to put it right sides together on top of that matching up our centers and clipping all three layers together. Again, you could have basted the zipper panel and then come back and done this. I just find that it stays together pretty good and we can save us ourselves a step here. Now you are going to notice we have little wings again. That is okay. Okay, so we're going to go across here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then we are going to fold this up with that seam um, pointing towards the top lining panel that way. And top stitch, stitch that with a 1 eighth of an inch seam allowance. So it looks something like that. The seam is pointing up and we are good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and do that with the other side, the exact same thing. And the other top panel.
All right, so this is what we have. Okay, so now one thing I noticed is um, I want my vinyl to be the same all the way up the top. Um, in the pattern, the lining piece would have shown on those side pieces. So I am going to attempt to make a continuous line. So I cut two inches off the lining panel and I cut a two and a half inch long piece of vinyl. Um, I sewed those together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, flipped it up and top stitched along the bottom here. Now, hopefully my measurements were right and these should be the same length as our pattern piece. And you'll see why I wanted to do this. This is not in the pattern. This is not part of the design. This is just a brandy thing that I really wanted to do. So I just want it to be continuous of that vinyl above the zipper panel. That's why I'm doing this. I'm probably a little bit too long here, but better to be too long and I can trim it up in the end. Okay, so I'm gonna take my bottom piece and my two side pieces, and we are going to construct the gusset exactly the same way we did with the exterior gusset. So three eighths of an inch seam allowance and the top stitch to the bottom. So here we go, exactly the same as the exterior. So now we want to find the centers of that bottom piece. So I'm just mar matching up my seams here, folding it in half and finding my centers. So I find it easiest to have the two zipper panels unzipped from each other when I attach the first side of the gusset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the slip pocket side because this is a side where we are going to leave an opening in the bottom of the bag for turning. We are also going to see if my math was right and I can make those vinyl pieces to line up and I haven't messed that up. I guess we will find out. Okay, so I'm going to mar uh, match up that center piece, the center markings of the bottom and the bottom of the main panel, main lining panel. And I'm just going to mark here um, a large enough opening for turning and I just write open just so I know that I won't sew across that. Just as a reminder for myself. Okay and now because I've I've modified it again with this I'm matching up where the vinyl seams are. So we will hopefully have a nice continuous line of stitching and a nice continuous line of faux leather above these panel. That is my attempt. Again, this isn't the way it's done in the pattern. This is just uh, a way that came to mind for me um, of how I would like it to look as I started constructing the bag. So we can see here, I cut my, my side vinyl piece here a little bit long. That's okay, we will trim that up later on. Better to be too long than too short, as long as that seam all matches up. Make sure your zipper's out of the way. You don't want it to get caught in our stitching. And again, if you're doing this following along and doing this the way I'm doing it, you want to line up the stitching of where the vinyls start and stop. Um, if you're doing this as per the pattern, you don't have to worry about this so much. Just uh, match up that raw edge side. And as we work our way down and around, this is where we find out if I did my math right and um, we have enough fabric to go around. Not too much, not too little, hopefully, but it's looking like we are going to be okay.
When working with curves, I always use a insane amount of wonder clips. I really don't like things to shift. And we can see that it is fitting good, so my approximation cuts were correct. Thank goodness, because I wouldn't have wanted to recut this and redo it. But again, this way with the added vinyl on the side panels, that is not part of the pattern. That is a brandy thing that I just decided I wanted to do with this bag. And so we're going to start here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and right about here we're going to branch out to 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. When we get to our mark here we're going to back stitch a couple times, cut our thread, jump over to the other mark, 5 8 of an inch, back stitch all the way up, right about here work your way back down to a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and that is going to make it so our bag is fits a little bit tighter in the bag. Now you can see how my vinyl lines up. Now if I had been smart I would have done my top stitching on top of the side panel. They would have matched up but hey nobody's going to notice that's okay. I'm just happy that um, my vinyl kind of matched up. And we have the opening in the bottom of the bag here. We will have to train uh, trim my side panels a little bit once this, once this is all done but that is okay. All right so zip up your zipper and go ahead and do a the exact same thing with the other side of the bag except for we are not leaving an opening in the bottom of the bag. We're just going to sew it all the way around. Again starting with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance at the top and working wider to the bottom to 5 8 So the 3 8 at the top keeps it the same width of the exterior of the bag but as we make it 5 8 around the rest of the lining it makes it a little bit smaller than the exterior so we have a non-floppy lining. So here we go. So you can see here, this is what I was trying to achieve. I didn't want right here it to look like my lining fabric. I wanted it to look like my exterior fabric and I think I achieved that okay. So now we're going to put it all together. So I like to have my zipper pocket at the back of the bag. So I'm going to position that this way and stick the exterior of my bag. So the back of the bag is against the back of the zipper or the zipper pocket right sides together and stuff it in. Again this will be a tight fit because our lining is slightly smaller than our exterior but our tops will be the same. Okay so what we want to do first is match up the centers of our main panels on both pieces and put a couple clips. We're in the home stretch, we're almost done. Okay, and same with the other main panels. Now make sure your flap is pointing down and into the bag. We don't want to get that caught in our seam here. And put a couple clips. Okay, and then we're going to move to the side and we are going to match up our seams of the lining and the exteriors. and opening up our seam allowances to reduce the bulk for when we're stitching. Okay, and then the other one here. Okay, and then I just like to do the centers of this, the side panels as well, right off the hop. Okay, and then the other ones, and then you're going to evenly distribute the fabric all the way around, and this is what we got. So I'm going to lay this on my machine bed like this, and I'm going to stitch 3 eighths of an inch all the way around from the inside of the bag. So once that's done you just want to go around and make sure everything was caught 
and nothing is where it shouldn't be, that there's no nips and tucks. And if it all looks good, you're going to start pulling it through that hole in the bottom of the bag. This one turned quite easily. It was a nice big turning hole, so it comes through very nicely. Wasn't too much of a workout to get it right side out. Okay, so in the lining part, punch out all your corners of the bottom, all your seams. And then reach in and do the same for the exterior, making them press them all out nice and crisp. And slip the lining into the bag. Okay, and then you're going to roll the seam in your with your fingers and finger press them. And I always put clips in just to hold that seam in place for top stitching. So just massage it into place. And I always clip all the way around. Okay, so once you've done that and it's clipped all the way around, you're going to put it down on your machine bed like this and you are going to top stitch with the 1 8th of an inch seam allowance, making sure your flap is pointed out of the way and your D-rings for your connectors are out of the way. And that is done. Okay, so now all we have left to do is close up the bottom of the bag and the pocket of the bag. So what you want to do is you want to reach into your zipper pocket, pull it out, and then reach in through the opening of that and grab the opening in the bottom of the lining and pull it up and through the zipper pocket. This gives us a nice seamless edge at the bottom of the bag so we don't have that um, top stitched kind of lip at the bottom. It's just nice and seamless. So then you're going to clip the opening And then we're going to take it to the machine and start where our stitching stopped, where we did the back stitches when we left the opening. And we are going to stitch across that opening with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. This is the only way I close up my bags with the birthing method. It's just, it's just an awesome way to do it. Make sure you backstitch at the start and the stop. And then you stuff that lining back in through that zipper pocket, back into the bag. And then where we have the nice folded edge of that zipper pocket, we are going to top stitch that shut. This leaves with a little bit of that seam, but it's on the inside of the pocket. No one will ever see it. And you stuff the uh, zipper pocket back into the zipper. And that completes the sewing part of this bag. And 
now you can see the bottom of the bag is fully closed. So now all that's left to do is to put your zipper end on here and install your straps, which I'm going to go do off camera. Okay, so she is complete. I went ahead, as I said, I put on my zipper end and I attached all my handles. Uh, I just rivet them on. I don't sew them on. Um, and then attached my crossbody strap. So that is a wrap for this tutorial, the Esperanza bag uh, by Aura Rosa Design. I really hope this tutorial was helpful. If you haven't already, please do me a solid and uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, feel free if you want to, to leave a comment or if you have any questions, you can look down in the description and all my contact information is there. Shoot me an email or or come over and see me at my Facebook page on my bag makers group. All of that is down there below. So again, thank you Alexis for allowing me to do tutorials on your patterns and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.